All right, hello everyone. This is going to be a December video. So if you do not know, December is a, a group or a hashtag on YouTube where people in December do videos on DOS, Disk Operating System, essentially. So in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a look at um, how I customize the look of DOS uh, to make it, it's going to be looking like, well, let me just show you. So I've got PCM version 14 running right here. Okay, so first of all, it gives me this startup menu here. This is something that I added to the auto exec, or maybe it was the config. I think it's the auto exec. I can't remember. Um, but anyway, this is, you'll see this. Um, it's pretty simple, and you can find other tutorials on how to do this. So this is not going to be the focus of this video. So let's just go with this. So I've got DOS 7.1 running right here. All right, so we are at the C prompt. And now you can see this looks a fair bit different than the normal DOS C prompt, right? We look at this, and uh, it gives us the time right here in 24-hour uh, format, uh, including the seconds. Um, now let's do a CLS here. Now you can see, I don't know why it doesn't stay green. That's a little bit of a bug in what I've done here, but it's still very good. So you can see, let's type mem. Yeah, it's using a lot of RAM, but uh, that's, I didn't optimize the auto exec. Uh, if you optimize it, it's going to go down a lot. I've got it down to like, 60 or 70 K of use conventional um, it, but it's using a lot more because I didn't optimize it uh, on purpose for this video the, the focus of this video is on how to get the DOS interface looking nice like this and uh, you know you get to you can press the up arrow key and you can see the previous um, you can see the previous commands that you typed in. So that's DOS key. That program is called DOS key. Um, but yeah, you get, uh, you get your time on the screen at all times. Uh, all of the text, as you can see, is green, except for the prompt. So it makes it you know, nice, easily, much more easily readable. Uh, in addition to that, we've added a uh, box cursor instead of the underlying cursor. I just, I like how the box looks. It looks more like a old terminal, like a hacker's interface or something like that. It just looks way better to me than the underlying thing looks. So we've added that. And I've also increased the uh, amount of text size on the screen here. I think this is 80 by 50, but don't quote me on that. Uh, we'll see in just a second what it's set to but I've got it set to show more text on the screen. So essentially what you're going to be getting out of this video is you're going to learn how to set up your system to look like this. You know, it gives you more space on the screen so you can st see stuff better. Uh, it's got good color accents so you can tell what's the command, what's, what's the output, um, and it gives you a clock, and it just looks generally nicer. So in the description of this video, I'm going to put a package, uh, I'll put a 7-zip archive. I can make a part of the archive that just has the modified files. In case you don't want to replace everything, you can just copy those specific things. So let's take a look at this. Let's go to edit. And we'll take a look at, as you can see, the edit window is also in that high text format, so you get a lot more information on the screen here, which is very nice to have. Um, so let's take a look at our auto exec. Okay, so we've got set sound. Okay, so that's doing our sound blaster stuff right here. D, okay, temp. So we've got our CD drive. DOS key. Okay, so we're loading high doskey.com, so that gives us our command history. Okay, 
Then right here, we're loading the mouse driver. Um, now this is the line you want to pay attention to right here, okay? Um, so this is what you want to add to the prompt. You can pause the video and take a look at this right here. Now just remember, uh, all of this is going to be included in the archive that I give you, so if you can't see what's on the screen, don't worry about it. Just get the archive and copy the files over. Just make sure that um, you are prepared to back up your old auto exec before you replace everything in case you have stuff in there that you need. Um, but then otherwise you can get it working. So this is the prompt that makes the time and makes it look nice. Uh, then we've got mode con rate 32 delay 1. It I think that changes the delay of the, the cursor a little bit. Um, so then we do that. And then the last thing is call text mode micro. So call text mode micro is what makes the text small and what gives us the box cursor. So it's a batch file located inside of CDOS. So let's open that up. Gonna go into DOS. It's hard to do this because I'm holding the microphone in my hand. So bear with me if I'm kind of slow. There it is, text mode.bat. Okay. All right, so here, here is our batch file, which will be included in the archive. Um, so we're doing mode 2H right here. Okay, and we're storing that into null. Uh, so then after that, we are checking if um, our command parameter is micro, then go to micro, otherwise it just, it just continues. Okay, so you can write anything other than micro, it'll do uh, the large mode. This is the one that happens if it's not micro. So it changes to 80 and 25, that's the normal mode right there. Okay, now down here is the micro mode where it's 80 by 50 instead of 80 by 25. So it makes it look more square instead of like stretched out like it normally looks. I, I don't like that stretched out look. So this I like better. So we're doing column 80 lines 50 and then we're running kill cur dash B. So kill cur is the thing that makes the cursor uh, into the box uh, instead of being the underlying thing. Um, it's my own program that I wrote in assembly language a long time ago. Uh, it's a very simple program. Uh, it just goes into some BIOS interrupts and changes the cursor essentially. Uh, I don't have the code for it anymore. I don't know what happened to it, but I will include the kill cur. It's a .com file and that is what makes the box cursor happen. So let's just close out of this right here. All right, let's see what we've got in here. It's kind of slow, sorry. But here, let's do QBasic. Okay, so we're gonna... Yeah, it's QBX. Okay, so here we've got QBasic. As you can see here, it's very nice to have the extra screen space with that small mode, because uh, you can really see what you're doing. And I've got a custom color scheme going on here with the QBasic, but uh, yeah, you can make that whatever you want. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so the point here is I simply want to set the screen back to... Okay, see, now you can see it's, it's very big, okay? So let's go back. Oh, uh, it didn't work. Okay, well, I need something to make the screen go back because, well, let's see if it does. It's probably not going to. No, see, it's still good. But let's, um, let's CD slash dot CD games dir. All right, let's. So this is interesting, this SCI test here. This is uh, an example game from uh, SCI Studio. It's either SCI Studio or SCI Companion. 
Uh, if you're interested, SCI Companion is a program that allows you to make old-fashioned adventure games like King's Quest, and they run on DOS, just directly on DOS without a problem. And so it's, it's amazing, and it's a great way if you want to make retro DOS games in an easy way without having to use QBasic and like starting from scratch pretty much. Uh, you can make these kind of games with SCI Studio or SCI Companion. So as you can see, it's got the standard menu system right here. Uh, but anyway, reason why I loaded this is hopefully, let's see what happens. Yes, yes, okay. See, this is the normal DOS mode here, right, okay? So what I did, I made another batch file. As you can see, it's probably easier for you to read uh, on the video now that it's like this. But in real life, it's much more pleasant to have it smaller, um, especially if you're using a full screen, because then you can actually see everything that you're coding or doing. Um, so let's go down here. So you can see I've got text mode bat. That's the one we looked at before. And now I've got TM bat. So I just did this. It's kind of pointless. Just call, if you want to call it something else, just call it like TM or something very short instead of calling it text mode. But I wanted to leave it as text mode, so I just made another file called TM that just calls this thing and tells it to be micro. Uh, so then now I can just use TM. So every this is the one problem with this whole hack that I've done here. The one problem with it is that every time you exit a game, it will go back to this old mode, like you see right here. Uh, this old mode where, where everything is big and it, you don't have as much screen real estate. Um, and so every time you quit a game, you have to type TM, and there you go. Now, now we're back. See? Now we're back to how it used to be. I really, really wish there was a way to make it automatically execute that. However, the only ways I can think of are the only way I can think of is to have a batch file for every single game where it runs that command after the game runs, but that's not a solution because I can't make a batch file for every single game, and that's not elegant. Um, so what I really need, and if any of you know how to do this, post a comment down below. I really want to know how can I execute a command every time a program exits. Can I get some kind of TSR or something like that that will automatically just run this batch file so that it goes back to normal instead of uh, having the big text mode? Um, if you know how to hack that or maybe even uh, making a patch to the command.com file uh, so that every time it detects a return from a different application, uh, like an application has exited, it automatically runs that. If, if you know how to do that, let me know, because that would make this perfect. Uh, but otherwise, it's, it's really good. I like it. Uh, you just have to type TM, so it's not bad at all. Uh, and it works on most versions of DOS. I know it works on 6.22 and 7.1. Uh, I think it'll work a fair bit earlier than that as well. Uh, but you've got to have ANSI installed. So let's take a look at the config SYS because we didn't look at that yet. Uh, we're going to go right here. Okay, so here's our config SYS. So this is where we've got our menu items. So we've got the menu items for each of the different options of starting with EMS starting with high mem and starting with no memory management, okay? So under EMM386, we've got our high mem uh, and we've got EMM386 and we load DOS high in the upper memory block, okay? And then we've got the one with just high mem uh, and then load DOS high as well, okay? And now uh, down here is our common area, so it loads all of these things every time DOS starts no matter what option you select. So that these most of these things are irrelevant. You always see these. Um, but down here you can see I've got an XMS disk 
uh, that's probably part of the reason why my conventional memory is so high currently. Uh, you don't need this, but I just have it because I wanted it for some reason. I haven't used this for a while, so a long time ago I needed it for something. But XMS disk is simply a RAM disk. It's a RAM disk that exists in the extended memory, and I believe I got it set to 16 megabytes right here. So that's pretty decent for a DOS RAM disk. Uh, then below that I've got ANSI. So that's the thing that makes the colors different. Um, so that's how we have, uh, you know, the different prompt versus output color, how we've got green and white. Uh, that's all done with the ANSI. Uh, so we, we're loading ANSI here, and then in the auto exec is where we have the actual functionality of, of ANSI. Uh, then we load our CD with banana, uh, and then we... I don't know why it's called banana, by the way, but like for some reason I always see people using banana, so I used banana. <laughs> um, but anyway, so then this is Sound Blaster, and I think this is another Sound Blaster, yeah. Uh, and I remmed both of those because I didn't need them, and they were using up extra RAM. Uh, so I think that is about it. I will include all of this stuff in the archive in the video description. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the video, and well... I guess I, I guess this probably will be my only MS-DOS video. So I hope you enjoyed it, hope you gained something from it, and maybe you can make an even better customized version and send it to me, or if you know how to fix that thing so that it doesn't have the TM, uh, that would be amazing. So thanks for watching, and have a good day.